power plant in the back with the, you know, with the cranes and some others. And so I'm going to try to make sure I bring out the relevant point of applicability between the regulators, R&D, and, and plant operations. So I'm going to talk about the Pelham Nuclear Generating Station. And then I'm going to hit about some, some of the issues, the problems they had, what caused them to go through recovery. It's direct link to knowledge management and workforce planning. And then a couple of process things you can look at. This might help you with your case studies that you're working on. Because each of you will be doing a case study about a fictitious, made up organization, or a real organization, or a real organization. And then you can see a kind of example of maybe what a case study would like to look like. All right, real quick, Palo Verde is the largest nuclear generating facility in the United States. It may continue to be the largest one um, without the new builds going on uh, in the U.S. and some of the new builds that have stopped. It's 1,400 megawatts per unit, over 4,400, 4,500 megawatts total output. May not match all the Koreans, but it's pretty big. All right, challenge. In 2002 to 2006, the plant had declining performance. Now, you heard Andre talk about one of the, what's the most important part about nuclear power, nuclear safety. Nuclear safety is derived in perf good performance, correct? So the regulators have to make sure the plants are performing well. R&D has to make sure they design the plant well and they're, and they're monitoring it. The operators back there, they got to operate the plant well. They gotta make sure that it's performing as intended. You have poor performance, it's an indicator of problems. Employee turnover was increasing, people were leaving. Nobody wants to stay in an in a, in a, in a organization that's not performing well, right? Operator training program was inactive. No leader development program was in place. Maintenance backlog was growing, the work wasn't getting worked off, issues were, were staying with the plant and they weren't being fixed. And there were numerous operator workarounds. What this means is the light was going off in the control room, instead of fixing the problem, they just put a piece of tape over it. That's how operators do it sometimes, in order to keep the plant running. And so the capacity factor dropped around 2006. Look how we were 94% and it just dropped like a rock. And then through recovery, capacity came back up and it's staying around the 94 percentile now. It takes a while to come out of recovery. So that's the bottom line and it was directly affected by impacts on knowledge management as a result of leadership issues. So let's talk about kind of um, how you diagnose this. Now this is the document from IMPO, Institute for Nuclear Power Operation in Wano. Have you guys heard of IMPO and Wano? Some of you? Okay. So IMPO and Wano, and you Koreans, you've heard of IMPO and Wano because they're right there next to you. They're the organization next to IAEA that regulates and evaluates performance of nuclear power plants throughout the world. And they have guidelines that they look at to help you determine if you have an organization whose plant performance is, is, is in, in, um, in poor health. There's three phases, a rational phase, you rationalize it, oh, we know why that problem's there. We're, we, we've always had that problem, we can fix that, don't worry about it. Then you realize phase, oh my God, we really are in trouble. Crap, the plant is really broken. And finally, the recovery phase, it identified in leadership attributes. It's created the concept of a learning organization, very key word for knowledge management. And so when you look at the cycle of plant performance, you've got various aspects of it. So for a regulator, this is very important. And for an operator, this is very important. You have seeds, like seeds, like you plant a seed in the ground, right? And you watch it grow, right? You put water on it and you watch it grow seeds of, of decline. That means your, 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 plants, your declining plant is growing on you. You don't know it yet. It's a weed. And then you've got, you've got the growth. And you're declining and you realize you're in trouble. And then you come out of recovery. And there's a lot of denial that goes on in here with the leadership team. They, they don't think they're in trouble. 
And usually um, what happens, and I've now worked with a numerous utilities in the U.S., actually three of them, in, in recovery work. That's what I do now. I didn't realize I'd go into that business, but I am. In almost every single case, management gets replaced, period. It happens almost every single time. I've not seen a case where the management team doesn't get replaced because the snake is rotten from the head down. Remember that. The snake is rotten from the head down. You can never, ever get a recover without replacing the management team. The management team will fight you because they don't want to be replaced, but the snake is rotten from the head down. And so here are some of the things that you read about in the Policy Note 14 document from Wano and Impo. These are not my words. Pipeline program for people is reduced. Things to look out for. Turnover or attrition occurs for technical roles and the impact is not evident. You're losing your, your, your best talent in the organization. They're leaving you. Succession plans exist, but development plans don't. Now, what does that mean? It means, well, we know if Bob leaves, Sue's going to replace, but we're not getting Sue ready for that next level of opportunity, are we? Sue, you got it. Good luck. <laughs> Reduction in investment in the plant, misalignment of budgets and business priorities. Key word, don't be cheap. Money's not there. We can't afford to operate this way. We have to find a way to get it done. We can't make the investment. If you're going to operate nuclear power plants, you have to make the investment. The consequence is too severe. Leaders lack the integrated plant knowledge, less experienced people at work. That's really key. I'm going to show you some demographic information here throughout my presentations that talk about the demographic shift going on in the U.S. industry and think about the demographic shift going on in your organization or your, your, your country. Then, then once you get, so what do you know when you're in decline, right? You see these things, these are the seeds, these are the things you should be looking out for. So once you're in decline, here's what you're going to start seeing. Very slow to fill vacancies with qualified people. Good people don't want to go to work for a sinking ship. Just don't. Why do I go to that organization? They're in trouble. I don't want to go there. Training issues surface. Pass rates for licensed operators is an issue. You know when you're in trouble, if you're a power plant and you're a regulator, is if you're, the operator pass rate falls below 90%. Period. You go and you look at an organization, the operator pass rate for, for the regulator's license, because the regulator's issuing the license, if the pass rate's below 90%, that plant is in trouble. The training program is ineffective. Remember that. Take that to the bank every single time. What happens is licensees, plants, they justify that low pass rate. Well, we had a problem with recruitment. Uh, we are, our, our, our candidates had an issue. There's a problem at home. They make up 101 excuses. There's no excuses. Bad selection processes mean bad candidates, which mean bad employees, bad operators, period. Organization becomes individually dependent. So this is important. One of the speakers this morning uh, talked about, is knowledge individual or is it group-based, right? It is group-based. And if plants are in trouble, you find that everybody depends on the individual to get it done. We'll give it to Sue. She can handle it, right? Sue does it all. The organization can't solve its problems. And individual heroes pop up. Why, those are great, having individual heroes, a little superman here and a superwoman over there, it's not going to solve your problem. The organization effectively has to work together to solve problems. The energy level for learning is lessened. We don't have time to go learn something new. How many times have you heard that? We don't have time to go learn something new in an organization. Regulators, we don't have the money to send you, do we, right? There's no money. Over there, you don't have time to go to school. You gotta stay on duty, you, gotta, you just gotta stay on schedule, right? You hear it all the time. That's a very important indicator that your progress is not gonna perform. If you can't reinvest in the future, continue expanding the knowledge base, you're creating yourself a problem down the road. It will not surface for many years. But I promise you, as Mother Nature causes rain, it will occur. Oversight of the organization is weak. The oversight people don't have the knowledge or skills to understand the problem of the plant. And the one I like the best, the HR and training people were overloaded. 
and staff is reduced. Don't have enough engineers, you don't have enough training people, you only have one person in HR and you expect that individual to do everything. It doesn't work. So these are indicators of declining performance. Those weren't my words, by the way. Those are the words written in Policy Note 14. For the last 10 years, Impo Iwano has said this, but nobody pays attention to it. Nobody, until you're in trouble. Recovery at Palo Verde identified our knowledge gaps. We started doing workforce analytics. We put a workforce development program in place. We put in our business plans and linked it to our knowledge and training programs. Palo Verde had a goal to be top decile, 10%, in the U.S. In, in knowledge and learning. Proved qualifications and standards for selection and hiring. And leadership model um, standards expectations were put in place. So these are some of the recovery actions, right, to recover. Because now the regulator has told the licensee, you're in column four, which is on the NRC matrix for, for performance, right? Quality four means one more incident and you get the keys taken away from you, you can't operate. And for Palo Verde, that means a million and a half dollars per day of lost revenue. How long do you think the plant can operate losing four to five million dollars for the site? I can tell you it's not very long, it's just a few months. San Onofre generating station shut down, not because it technically couldn't operate, uh, Southern California Edison couldn't financially afford them any longer. They could no longer make the investment to keep them operating. The decision made for Entergy to shut down Pilgrim plant was based on the fact that they had to continue to make investments and reinvestments into the plant, and the plant was not profitable, and they had to shut the, they're, they're shutting the plant down because of, they're making investments to keep it operational, but they're only for the short term and not for the long term. So these are the cycles of plant performances. These were the stages that Palo Verde went through, and they're currently are about that location. They've been through recovery. They've had some performance issues right recently again, but they're still, doing, they're still doing very well. So this is the Palo Verde demographic profile a few years ago. And so you can see real quickly the demographics, right? You're going to lose all of these people through retirements. And you don't have enough mid-career professionals, so you have to have good development, knowledge and training programs at the back. Because these workers that are coming in today have a shorter period of time to get ready for the future than the workers that have been there who started to operate the plants. They learned over 20 years how to operate the plant. Today's world, you don't have 20 years. That's the challenge. So knowledge management is having the right development and training programs for competencies for the future. This isn't about creating the knowledge base, it's about maintaining the knowledge base. That's very important in our industry. We're not, nuclear power has been around a long time, right? So we have to maintain the knowledge base. For those who are newcomers, it's about creating the knowledge base. Those that are long-term operators in Korea and Russia, it's about maintaining the knowledge base. Two different sort of dynamics, but has the same issue. And so this is a hiring development program. Palo Verde's goal was that 70-90% come through the pipeline, and then the smaller amounts come in through the, through the side. I won't go through all of these because of time's sake. Um, so this slide's important. I wanted to make sure we got to this. So we talked about the knowledge nuclear knowledge management processes, about people, process, and technologies. And so as you come into an organization, one of the things you have to do you should be looking at are what are our people programs? How do we maintain and develop our people? How are we mentoring them? How do we hold them to performance standards? What sort of processes do we have? Do we have good standards, good procedures? Are we efficient? And most importantly, do we have the right technology for us to manage our knowledge base? So it's all three of those combined. You could be successful without one of them, but you won't be successful very well. I will argue you will never be successful without people. I'd argue you can be successful without computer or expensive IT systems, but you need technology for management of data and records and execution of processes. Very important. And so Palo Verde's, when, uh, when we talk about knowledge risk assessment, and you're gonna, we're going to talk about that over and over again throughout the course of this week, that's one method, one single method or strategy to understanding if you're managing your unique and critical knowledge. But the most important message is you have to have all three of those pieces in place. You have to have the right people development programs, 
the right processes, and the right technology tools. Without those, you will not be effective long term. And as a regulator, and you're looking at a plant to be, get ready to come online, or to, to get operational licenses, what are their programs? So, let's talk about why this is important. This is going to be your typical nuclear power plant. <clears throat> we have three types of people in this industry. We have people who are new to the industry. We have people who go through a training program, come out as independent, competent workers. Key word there, independent, competent workers. And we have people who are our experts. It takes about 10 years to get a senior licensed reactor operator a license in, in the United States. About 10 years, 8 to 10 years. From the time that person comes in the door, they go through the non-licensed operator program, they go through the licensed operator program, and they go to the senior reactor licensed operator program. It takes 8 to 10 years. And so when we talk about knowledge management, we really talk about closing that gap between the independent competent worker and the expert worker. We have training programs in nuclear power. We wouldn't be able to operate. IAEA requires a certain standard training programs to be in place. MPO and WANA requires a certain amount of training programs to be in place. But the training programs do not train everything. They can't. That's the gentleman earlier this morning talked about it. It's up here. You cannot have everything in a book. You have to get the experience, right? You have to take the book learning and the, and the relationship building, get it out in the field, and, and start working with the expert workers so you can understand the subtleties of things that just don't necessarily translate in training. And as regulators and as operators and as R&D, we need to understand that. You can't take a new inspector fit him or her in the field and expect them to be successful. They're going to get walked on by the plant. They, the plant's going to know you're green, you can smell it, and they're going to take advantage of you. If you're an operator, you can't go out and do a round without having somebody go out with you and show you how to do that round, no matter what they teach you in class. You've got to go with somebody and touch the equipment and feel and understand how it operates. And the guy or gal who puts those valves back together I don't care what you say about those mechanic guys and gals, valves are complex and they're difficult. As much as easy as they might think, what causes nuclear plants the most issues that I've seen in my experience is bad packing in valves. Now what's packing? That's that sealant between the valve closure and the opener. There's packing in there. Time and time again, these plants get into trouble because the packing fails. Lord knows. I don't understand it. And then the other problem is erosion corrosion, right, in the pipes. Stuff gets old, just like instructors, we get old. <laughs> so it's really about working with that expert worker. I showed you the demographic. What's happening to the expert workers? We're dying off. I'm a dinosaur. Pretty soon I'll be oil and tar. So how are you going to ensure and as a regulator, where are you getting the experience from? As R&D, where are you getting the experience for research and development and designing new knowledge sources? And as an operator, how are you ensuring that the, that the operators today are doing the right rounds? I have been to two different utilities, and each of those utilities had an issue with operators not doing the rounds correctly. Op Non-licensed operators, these guys are, are a miracle. They know they have to go out and, and daily do a round, inspect the valve, and look at a piece of equipment, and they have to mark it off on a sheet, right? Well, that gets old after a while. So after a while, instead of looking at the valve, going up and looking at it, they look at it, okay, I, think, I see it over there. And they mark it off, and they don't touch the equipment like they're supposed to. I've seen it happen now at two different sites, two different utilities. That's where technology can eventually come in and be able to provide those measurements and those rounds without having to go touch the valves all the time. But nonetheless, you still have to go out and do certain rounds at a plant, right? You have to, you have to physically look for certain conditions. And, the, and, and that's the work that humans need to do when they interact with the plant. The operators will tell you the plant's always talking to you. You ever heard that term? The plant's talking to me. It's making noises. You've got to listen to the plant. It's a piece of equipment. It's like a car. You know your car, you know the sounds your car makes, you know, and it's making a funny sound, so you go into the mechanic and say, 
It's making this thing. It's doing this thing. Mechanical excitement says, I don't see anything wrong with this thing. No, 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 it's not right. And, well, it's working now. As soon as you leave, the mechanic closes up for the night. Pfft, there goes the head of the car, right? The engine head pops or something, right? And now you have to tow the car. And, and now the problem is more visible. But the plant is always talking to you. And so, the, so the guidance is, for operators, how do you listen to the plant? For your regulator, how do you listen to the plant through the operators? And making sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Anyway, you get that through this part right here. And that is the knowledge risk assessment. When we talk about knowledge risk assessments, we're talking about assessing who has unique and critical knowledge, what is it that they have, and how are we going to help them share it with others. There's lots of ways to do that, but that's really the risk process. So at Palo Verde, we developed a process like any good thing. We developed maps, a process maps for who has responsibility. We, we develop tools and guidelines and a process. But the bottom line is, it's a leader's responsibility to understand the, the competency skills that their workers have and who has unique or critical skills or competencies slash knowledge to be effective. And at Palo Verde, we use a process that looks at uniqueness, critica uniqueness and criticality. So I'll share with you this concept, right? An operator has critical knowledge, right? A licensed operator. You would say it's critical, very important. And in fact, some would say it's mission critical. Somebody had the definition earlier for mission critical knowledge, right? Without them, you couldn't be successful. But are they unique? You usually have somewhere between 90 to 120 at a plant, give or take, size of the plant. So if you lose one or two, it's not a problem. It's an issue, but not a problem. You lose 100 of them, you're not operating. But what about that engineer who does the calculation? What about that craftsman person who's out in the field who, who can really understands how that plant operates and the noises it makes? It's talking to them, remember? That's why these guys that wear the overalls and go out and work in the plant, they're always a little strange, aren't they? But they're listening to the plant. Anyway, so that's the unique or critical knowledge. That's what you're looking for. And if you have, you have something that's very unique and very critical, that's the target that you want to look for. You don't need to do it for everybody. You don't need to assess everybody's knowledge. I've got 35 years of nuclear experience in the plant. Who cares about what I did 35 years ago? I'm not an R&D, and even R&D 35 years ago is a long time. Right? A regulator. In the United States, and I, I can't speak for elsewhere, the re, what you read in the regulation and what you actually know you're supposed to do are two different things sometimes. The regulation says one thing, and the, and the inspectors live by a different set of guidelines. I have no idea how they do it. They have the regulation, and they have their like inspection guide. It has kind of different criteria. So even this, some of that is different. And so you don't necessarily... You have to have this understanding by working with the organization. Not everything can be captured and written down. You just have to get experience. That's the most important thing. You've got to live life. The problem is the dinosaurs are dying off or becoming oil and tar. And how are you going to ensure the continuity of the expertise necessary for nuclear power and other nuclear products across the world? That's the challenge in front of all of you. Because in a few years, I'll be a dinosaur. Andre and I will be in the dinosaur old folks' home. Monica will come and visit us. <laughs> Make sure we're healthy. But you, in the audience, you're the ones who are going to carry this on. So learn from us to help you carry this mission on. It's a critically important mission. I cannot stress it. I am not a big fan of renewable energy. Stuff happens to like the wind, the solar, stuff happens, right? Unless we can find a way to produce energy that doesn't require turning a turbine, I'm all for it. That's reliable 100% of the time and safe. And no matter what the weather conditions that Mother Nature throws at you, so I think we need nuclear power around the world. I just think so, my opinion. All right. So here's the deal, scale for uniqueness that, Pal that APS uses, Palo Verde uses. I'm just going to tell you, real simply, 
Highly unique. Nobody else has it. Somebody else had this definition, very similar. Nobody else has it, so that's unique. A bunch of people have it, not so unique. Just think of it that terms, right? Somebody's got highly unique knowledge, there are five. Somebody has, if somebody, everybody knows about it, right? It's not yet really unique. Criticality is very similar to the, use, the definition you saw earlier for critical. It's mission critical knowledge. It's very important versus important but not as important. Or every, it's just knowledge that's everyday knowledge. It's not that important. The key is it depends on each company what's critical and important to them and then what's unique. When you do knowledge risk assessments and you find out that the manager has unique or critical knowledge or the vice president has unique or critical knowledge or the general uh, deputy director, that might be a problem because their role is to teach it to others and to transfer it. So when you see that, you know that's a problem. But then it's that hidden technician in the back corner that nobody talks to at lunch or takes out after work to, with the rest of their friends that spends all the overtime hours cranking out these calculations and she's all by herself and all of a sudden she gets a better offer and she's gone and guess what? The calculations aren't being done anymore and the engineer who relies on that technician now has to think for himself, oh God help him. Because the brain power just walked out and nobody knew it. That's what you're looking for when you do risk assessments. So at Palo Verde they prioritize it, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, critical, business important, and limited bench strength. This is their data that they have. Um, notice they've been making significant progress in, their, in the amount of uh, re reducing their uh, alpha and bravos over the years. Slowly has gone down and more and more uh, focus is now on that, uh, uh, the Charlies, which is business important. So the goal is you'll never get to zero. There's always something that pops. But one of the things that the site started doing and other sites are doing is instead of doing risk assessments, they're doing qualification, a qual matrix. or identifying the type of skill sets and qualifications that an organization needs and when they're likely to use it. This is an example. So what are the advanced quals? I can't even pronounce half of these anymore, but it's software quals, it's, it's startup quals, it's balance of plant quals, it's different things. So, that, so the key is, is it always about unique or critical knowledge? It's about the qualifications and do you have enough of them and are you deep enough with them? So a lot of organizations are starting to move this direction. Um, so some of the challenges that Palo Verde had, plain and simple, leaders weren't buying in, leaders thought this was extra work, until the leaders started realizing it's their job to ensure their employees are fully qualified, capable of performing the work. They can't complain, oh man, I lost this person, now who's gonna do this? I need to go hire a consultant. Contractor, that's the manager's fault. That's bad management. So if that happens to your organization, you know, that's a leader issue. And so these are action plans that were put together. I'm not going to go through all of them, but I wanted to discuss with you this one particular concept real quick. So one of the things that Palo Verde did is they realized their action plans were important to make sure they're transferring the knowledge. But as HR people, and you kind of heard this earlier, we're not necessarily the brightest people in the world, are we, in HR? That's why we're in HR, right? Otherwise, I'd be an operator, or I'd be an engineer, or I'd be an inspector. So I'm not very bright. So I have to rely on managers to help me understand if an action plan is any good. So at Palo Verde, they put together this director review panel to review the, the action plans. Oh my God, accountability for their own organization. How about that? They said, listen, we're not going to tell you you've got good action plans. You, Mr. Director, Deputy Director, you own these action plans. It's your people, for God's sakes. Figure out if you're transferring your knowledge, if you're creating a problem for the future. So they use these director panels to do it. And they have a series of directors that review the work, and they agree, and they sign off. And it, 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 does, it has a couple of advantages. It gets the leader involved. It has very specific actions. It gets buy-in. That's the bottom line behind it. I'm trying to hurry this up. Increases accountability, and these are some of the languages from some of the directors and managers, but the bottom line is it, it increases accountability, it heightened the value, it made it important because directors don't have time for everything, but they sure know if they've got unique or critical knowledge, they've got to deal with it because it's a risk, it's a problem in their organization, and it proved overall effectiveness. 
So what it could look like, better, better, better sort of action plans, more signatures and approvals, more, uh, more candidates were identified for backup, uh, strategies were modified for hiring, make sure we got the right type of people in there. And then they had, there's an oversight problem. I'm going to talk about this later on, a people health committee process. This is a process um, that has been implemented in the United States. It's, it's um, designed to help improve uh, knowledge management, leadership development, effectiveness. And so bottom line, the process is about, and I'm going to talk about this tomorrow, workforce planning, linking it to your risk assessments, creating action plans, development plans, and then monitoring for self and ingest. So that's kind of the overall flow of this, right? There's a, there's a process involved. I'm giving you guys just one little snippet of the process. But at the end of the day, end of the day, it's about leadership. It's about you as knowledge champions, effectively influencing your leaders to do the right thing. Any questions for me? All right, well, thank you. I, yep, in the back. Not just uh, to make a comment on power body because power body is a reference plan to for and nuclear plan. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, okay. I wanted to make a comment on the power body because power body is a reference plan to Korean standard nuclear power plant. Uh, when we decided to have our self-reliance programs on nuclear plant. Palo Verde, the, the combustion engineering, the designer of the Palo Verde agreed to transfer the design technology. So we succeeded to have our own nuclear plant. Yeah. So now we export our plant to UAE. So we agreed to do the technology transfer to UAE. So thanks to Palo Verde. And that's why there's so many Palo Verde exit Palo Verde employees working for UAE right now. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, so this, the important piece about this is that not just the story I told you, all of it true, it's also think about your cases, right, that you have to work on your projects, your case studies. You're going to hear other case studies throughout the week. So think about the structure of your case study. What problem are you going to try to solve? What's your issue? What problem do you want to try to solve? What tools and how do you think you want to solve it? Who, who do you have to get to buy in on this? What's your timeline, horizon? And then, and then what do you think your results will be? You saw every one of those examples in, in this presentation. That's one of the advantages of this particular presentation. I gave you a timeline of production, not necessarily of the work. I gave you kind of the problem and I gave you kind of the solution. So think about that structure. Use this as your guide. All right, thank you everybody and have a good evening.